Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Crimin Ollie, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, extreme horror, I've got a review for you of Psychic Teenage Bloodbath by Carl John Lee. So let's start with a definition. I, I've talked about extreme horror books on the channel a few times before. Um, I've I've talked about uh, The Slob by Aaron Beauregard, which is a book I really didn't like at all, um, and Sick Bastards by Matt Shaw, which I also didn't like very much. And those are the kind of books that I think about when I think of extreme horror. So books that go out of their way to be graphic and really kind of dwell on the violence that, that's within their pages to, to an extent that is kind of almost pornographic. So the, the violence in those books becomes the whole point of those books and they go out of their way to be as disgusting and shocking and extreme as possible. Um, I'm not sure that's true of, uh, of Psychic Teenage Blood Path. I think, uh, and this, you know, I, I don't want to offend people who like extreme horror books, although I guess people who like extreme horror books um, probably think of themselves as unoffendable. Uh, in my experience, most of the most of the books that I've read, which you know, which label themselves as extreme horror, are not books that I've enjoyed. I feel that they get too wrapped up in the violence and not enough in the characters and story. Um, I think Psychic Teenage Blood Bath is a bit better than that. Um, in that it does have interesting characters it has a decent storyline um, and whilst it is incredibly violent so, so make no mistake when I say I don't think this is extreme horror this book is really really graphic but it doesn't dwell on that graphic violence um, you know horrific things happen and uh, there are many many horrific things that happen in this book but horrific things happen and then the story moves on they are part of the story rather than being the whole point of the book so that ramble about extreme horror over um, let's get on to actually talking about the book so as the title suggests it's about a psychic teenager who causes a bloodbath um, and that description will probably bring to mind the book and movie Carrie um, and this book definitely owes a debt to Carrie um, so it's got so, so like Carrie it's set in the 70s albeit this book was was published just last year um, and it it really leans into that kind of um, that that kind of 70s vibe and and it has a particularly it felt to me more 80s than 70s um, a lot of the time in terms of the kind of horror movies that it that it's referencing um, the story is about a, a lesbian couple at high school um, one of them so that so they're subjected to kind of horrific abuse they go to the prom like Carrie goes to the prom um, but in this book that scene is at, at the start of the book rather than the end um, and um, one of them is um, is injured and falls into a coma um, and the book is about her trying to get her revenge um, on the town so when she's in her coma she develops these psychic abilities and is able to make people um, like is able to bend the townspeople to her will basically um, and she does that with with really horrific um, effect uh, in a number of incredibly graphic scenes um, so the book really then becomes about her her girlfriend the one who's not in a coma um, trying to figure out what's going on and save the town effectively and it's a really fun book and it's got a definite horror movie vibe to it so as I say it felt to me a bit more kind of 80s than 70s um, but it definitely um, reminded me a lot of some of like the Nightmare on Elm Street's films uh, and other films that play around with kind of nightmares and dreams and things like that. There's a number of scenes where that take place in a kind of a kind of dream space. Um, it also, funnily enough, reminded me of James Herbert's book The Fog. So I'm not sure if that was a, a definite influence on it, but you get you know repeated scenes of people doing things kind of against their will and outside of their normal nature um which are <laughs> incredibly horrific uh, and disgusting and it's that kind of gleeful gore that really carries carries the book um you you you, you read it wanting to know what happens next what horrific thing is going to happen next but like i say unlike extreme horror books that really dwell on the violence um, this book just moves at a pace all the way through um, and whilst there are <laughs> many many horrific things that happen in it 
um, it, it, you know, the story keeps on going. It never feels like it slows down and just focuses on one moment in time. And, it, and in that way, again, it reminded me of, um, you know, 80s horror movies where the special effects, you know, they'd put a lot of effort into <laughs> into doing an incredible special effect, which would only last a few seconds. So it's, it's definitely got that 80s vibe to it. Um, I really, I really quite enjoyed it. It's not a deep book. It's not going to change your life or anything like that. Um, but it's a it's a fun, quick read. Um, the characters are well drawn. You know, the characters are all convincing and interesting. Um, the central couple in particular are, are well done. And the heroine um, who's, you know, coming, trying to come to terms with what's happened to, to her girlfriend, as well as what is now happening, you know, outside of that. Um, so she was a, a really interesting character to read. Um, and also, um, respect to, to Carl John Lee, who includes um, content warnings in the book. So at the start, um, there's, a, there's a page where he says, you know, if you, if you are, if you need content warnings, they're at the back of the book. So you don't have to, you know, you don't trip over them. They're not going to spoil the book for you. But at the back of the book, there's a comprehensive list of content warnings. And, and this book definitely <laughs> needs a comprehensive list of, of content warnings because there's some very messed up stuff in it. And worth saying as well that like the books I uh, reviewed yesterday, um, this is a self-published book. So Carl John Lee is a self-published author. He's published a, a bunch of different things and he's very good at his craft. Um, he, he writes entertaining horror books. He goes, you know, he doesn't mess about. Um, he goes straight for the jugular. But I, I had a good time with the other book by him. I read uh, Blood Beast Mutations as well. Um, so he's a he, he's a fun writer and, and I'm, I'm pleased that writers like this are able to make them uh, make a name for themselves in the in the self published space. So, um, you know, the authors I talked about yesterday are authors who are you know there was it, I think in all cases it was their first book and they're not well known. Whereas Carl John Lee is someone who, um, you know, you see people talking about. So, hope you enjoyed that. Let me know if you've read Suck It Teenage Bud Bath or other books by Carl John Lee. Um, and as always, thanks very much for watching. I hope you're safe and well out there. I hope you're reading good stuff, and I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.